In this video, we'll be going over cards which got banned the quickest after being released in the TCG. And at number 10, we have the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardiche. This card was banned 8 months after it was released, which is 5 months faster than they banned Chaos Emperor Dragon, a card which was so broken and overpowered that it basically created the ban list, and that card wasn't banned until 13 months after it was released. Now, why was the Phantom Knights of the Rusty Bardiche banned? Well, it tried to pull a sneaky one by having a cost which was actually a benefit, while also having a good effect for that cost. This is a Link 3 monster which requires 2 plus dark monsters as its materials, and since the dark attribute is arguably the best attribute in the game, that's a super easy requirement to fulfill for a lot of decks. And it has the effect where you can send a Phantom Knight monster from your deck to the graveyard as a cost in order to set a Phantom Knight spell or trap card directly from your deck. Now, Phantom Knight monsters have effects in the graveyard, with a couple of them allowing you to straight up search out other Phantom Knight cards from your deck with their graveyard effects. So, sending Phantom Knight monsters to the graveyard is a good effect. And the Phantom Knight spell or trap cards that you can set are also good. There are two really good targets for setting with this card's effect, and then there's also a handful of other just normal good targets. The Phantom Knight archetype has a lot of good cards that are very good at playing well with other archetypes as well. So, Rusty Bardiche was seen playing a whole bunch of decks, and essentially allowed you to go plus two off of its effect, on top of the fact that it had great arrows, and another effect on top of it. If a Dark Xyz monster is special summoned into a zone this card points to, you get to destroy one card on the field. And the Phantom Knights have a card called Phantom Knights of Break Sword, which is arguably one of the best rank three Xyz monsters in the game, who has an effect to destroy cards as well. So, an easy to bring out card that lets you go plus two off of its normal effect, while also having a good effect in addition to that, that can be splashed into other decks as an engine, well, it's no wonder this card was banned so quickly, and even beats out all of the famous banned cards. Mainly because there wasn't really a ban list back then, until Chaos Emperor Dragon came out. And at number nine, we have True King Lithosagem, The Disaster. This card was banned 7 months after it was released in the TCG, and has recently come off the Forbidden list, and is only a limited monster, where you can play one per deck. Now, this card came out with all the other True King monsters, who all basically have the same effect, where you can special summon this card from your hand by destroying two monsters on your field or in your hand, with at least one of them sharing the same attribute as that True King monster. And then where the True Kings differed is with their second effect, where, if you chose to destroy two monsters who are both of the same attribute, where Earth attribute in Lithos Gem's case, you could look at your opponent's extra deck and then banish three monsters with different names. Since most people only play one copy of staple extra deck monsters, getting this card out and using its effect could essentially rob your opponent out of a way to out whatever strategy you're doing, or completely screw up their combo pieces if they only played one copy of crucial extra deck monsters, like Spiral Double Helix, or ABC Dragon Buster, for example. And if used in dinosaur decks, where destroying cards in your hand allows you to special summon dinosaurs from your deck, that card was just absolutely broken. Especially since it can then be used to go into True King of All Calamities, which allows you to lock your opponent out of monster effects for a turn. It was just a tiny bit better than all the other True Kings, especially for some of the monsters of its attribute. So it got banned for being both a great support card and having a powerful effect, on top of being a good support card, and people were very surprised to see this card being set to limited because its ability to snipe your opponent's extra deck monsters is just that good. And at number 8 we have Zodiac Broad Bull. This card was released in the exact same set as True King Lithosagem, and was banned in the exact same ban list, which means it was banned 7 months after its release. And since these two cards have the exact same dates on them, I put Broad Bull ahead in the list because it's still currently banned. Because also, technically, Zodiac Dryden shares all of these details as well. Came out in the same sets and was banned in the exact same ban list. But that card is currently limited, so I just added the one to this list that is still currently banned. But technically, this spawn the list goes to both of them, since they were both kind of banned for the same reason. You see, with Zodiac Broadbull and Zodiac Dryden and Zodiac Ratpira three copies. These were used in one of the few tier 0 decks in the game's history, a very exclusive list that has less than 10 decks on it. And Zodiacs have a distinct accomplishment of having at least one competitive event, with every single topping participant playing a version of a Zodiac deck. 
and I don't think any deck before or since then has had a 100% representation rate in top tables at a competitive event. As the requirements for being tier 0 is to have more than 65% representation at those kinds of events, which Zodiacs were able to beat very easily. So what made the deck so good, especially Zodiac Broad Bowl? Well, it was their hyper consistency. A deck needs to be consistent in order for it to be viable. It needs to have ways to search out their main combo pieces, while also establishing a strong board, destroying your opponent's monsters, and then maybe getting a floodgate out or some way to disrupt plays. And Zodiacs could do all of this with any one card from their deck. As the gimmick to Zodiacs was all of the Zodiac XC's monsters could be summoned with any Zodiac monster once per turn, including other Zodiac XC's monsters. If you wanted to bring them out again, you'd have to exceed some of them the old-fashioned way. And Zodiac Broad Bowl allowed you to search out any Beast Warrior type monster from your deck, as long as it had the availability to be normal summoned. And this effect was a soft once per turn. And to bring this card out normally, you just needed two level 4 monsters. So, with Zodiac Rat Pier being a level 4 monster, and essentially allowing to get out two other copies of itself from the deck, you could easily bring out all three of your Zodiac Broad Bowls in a single turn, and then get three searches off of all of them, and then rank one of them up into Zodiac Dryden, who could easily disrupt plays during your opponent's turn. And if your opponent did manage to destroy all your cards, your deck was so hyper consistent, you could set up again during your next turn with no problem, which is kind of a problem for an archetype, if they're not actually stopped or slowed down by getting all of their stuff destroyed. Which is why these two cards were banned so quickly, and absolutely dominated all kinds of events before that happened. And at number 7, we have Perform a Pal Monkey Board. This card was banned 7 months after it was released in the TCG, which is tied with the previous two spots on this list. However, Monkey Board was banned about 5 days earlier than the previous two, who share the exact same dates. So since it was banned a tiny bit earlier, which means it was banned a little bit faster, it takes a higher spot on this list. Now, Performer Pal Monkey Board was involved in another Tier 0 deck, as it has an effect where, when this card is placed as a scale, you can add a level 4 lower Performer Pal monster from your deck to your hand. Now, at first glance, this doesn't really seem that bad, and its scale and monster effects don't really seem that broken either. It's just the archetype it belongs to happens to have a lot of really good cards in it, but also allow you to search out all of their other cards from the archetype, and Monkey Board is like the ultimate starter for that deck. I've heard it described before that Monkey Board is like the searcher that searches your searchers, who will then search your other searchers. And since the Performa Pal deck was tier 0, it was also known as the Pepe deck when it was in full force, as there will be another card from that archetype on this list, banning this one card was a way for them to kind of stop its hyper consistency, for kind of the same reasons they banned Zodiac Broad Bowl. And at number 6, we have Topologic Gumblar Draken. This card was banned 6 months after it came out, and the reason this card was banned so quickly is because it allowed you to pretty easily discard 6 cards from your opponent's hand before they had a chance to play the game. As what this card does is it's a Link 4 monster with some of the easiest materials to accomplish, just 2 plus effect monsters, and has 2 effects on the field. One of them is if a card is special summoned to a zone a Link monster points to, you can discard two random cards from your hand to make your opponent discard the same amount. It also has another effect where if it's extra linked when it's summoned, you then get to discard two cards from your opponent's hand without a cost. So what people would do with this card is bring it out with an extra link to discard two cards, then activate its effect on your turn normally by just special summoning a card to a link zone, then during your opponent's turn, players would use Link Karibble to special summon itself to one of your link zones during your opponent's turn, in order to activate its effect to discard two cards again, which, if you went first, allowed you to get rid of six cards in your opponent's hand before they got a chance to play, essentially getting rid of their entire hand. And with how Goki Dex could accomplish this thanks to his Soul Day and Phoenix Blade, Topologic Gumblar Dragon became a win condition on its own, and the only reason it took six months to ban this card was because no one was really using it for the first two months it came out. Once people discovered how good it could be if it was made the central strategy of your deck, Everyone started playing the hand loop and got this card banned as soon as the next ban list came out. And at number 5, we have Nightmare Goblin, who was only in the game for 4 months before he got banned. Funny enough, part of the reason people weren't using Topologic Gumblar Dragon when it first came out is because Nightmare Goblin was still legal. And what this card does is it essentially gives you double summon on basically a generic Link 2 monster with great arrows. 
as it just requires any two monsters with different names as its materials, which means you can use tokens. And when this card is summoned, you can discard one card in order to normal summon one additional time to a zone this card points to. And if this card was co-linked when it was summoned, you get to draw an additional card. In addition, your co-linked monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. So, this card was essential in setting up an unbreakable board, as it gave you that ever so crucial extra normal summon, advanced your combo plays with its great arrows, and easily allowed you to take advantage of its protection with its great arrows. With Nightmare Goblin and the other Nightmare support cards, you could have a Trigate Wizard on the field who couldn't be destroyed by anything, targeted by anything, and could negate one thing per turn, all while making that Trigate Wizard easier to get out since most meta decks are kind of balanced around only having one normal summon. So gaining an additional one on top of a combo extender was just way too much advantage. And that's why this card got banned pretty quickly. And at number four, we have the Baby Rulers, who were banned four months after their release. Now, these cards were banned in the same amount of time as Nightmare Goblin, but Nightmare Goblin was playable for about two weeks longer than the Baby Rulers. So technically they were banned a little bit faster. You see, when the Dragon Rulers first came out, they were an archetype of eight monsters, the four big ones and then the four baby ones, whose only effects were to discard themselves as well as another dragon type or a fire attribute monster from your hand in order to special summon the adult version of themselves from your deck. And since the Dragon Rulers themselves are still considered some of the best cards in the game's history, banning all of the baby rulers was just Konami's way of trying to fix the problem. It's kind of like how they banned Performer Pal Monkey Board or Zodiac Broadbolt. They didn't want to have to ban the entire archetype, so they were trying to hit some of the combo extenders. But as it turned out, Dragon Rulers was still very strong, even with all of their baby cards banned. So they eventually were limited, and then banned 23 months after their introduction. But in their first round of trying to rein in the Dragon Rulers, they banned all of the baby rulers very quickly after 4 months, which did slow down their consistency, but the main deck monsters were so good, that three of them are still banned to this day, and they only removed one of them from the ban list to see if they were still as broken as they used to be. And since that one non-banned Dragon Ruler has seen consistent competitive success since it was unbanned after four years, that should say a little something about the power level of the entire deck when it was at full power. A deck that was never actually tier zero surprisingly, because of the next spot on this list. And at number three, we have Spellbook of Judgment a card which was banned four months after it came out, and was released in the exact same set as the Dragon Rulers, and was banned in the exact same ban list as the Baby Rulers. And while all of the Baby Rulers are now unbanned, Spellbook of Judgment is still very much banned, which is why I put it at a higher spot on this list. Now, I've talked about Spellbook of Judgment a lot in my other videos, and that's partly because it's one of the strongest single cards in the game's history. So something like this will show up a lot in lists that talk about the best cards in the game. As what this card does is during the end phase, you get to add spellbook spell cards from your deck to your hand up to the number of spell cards you activated that turn. And then you get to special summon a spellcaster type monster from your deck who has a level less than or equal to the number of cards you added to your hand. And the spellbook spell cards are pretty good. It's kind of like the case with the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish. It allows you to gain advantage with good cards, as even after Spellbook of Judgment was banned, Spellbook decks are still a competitive deck at top events. So being able to go plus 7 off of its effect, and bringing out basically any spellcaster type monster from your deck on top of that, is just some of the best advantage you could possibly get. It allowed you to use all the cards in your hand, no scratch that, it encouraged you to use every card in your hand, to great effect at that, so that you can then refill your hand with everything you want during the end phase, and then maybe bring out a floodgate like Zhao Jin the Spiritualist to lock your opponent out of special summoning monsters. If Spellbook of Judgment only had the effect to add cards to your hand during the end phase, it would still be really good, but I don't know about one of the most broken cards of all time. The fact that it also lets you special summon a monster from the deck is what pushes that card into legendary tier, which is why Dragon Rulers were never tier 0. This one card was so good, it single-handedly stopped the best archetype in the game's history from reaching tier 0 status, which is why it was banned so quickly after it came out. It basically only existed for one ban list cycle, and will probably never be taken off the ban list without an errata. And at number 2, we have Perform Mage Plush Fire, which was banned 3 months after it was released in the TCG. This is another combo piece of the Pepe deck that the Performa Pal Monkey Board was part of, except this card is a little bit more broken, as it has an effect, where if this card on the field is destroyed, you can special summon a Perform Mage monster from your hand or deck. 
Special summoning monsters from your deck is one of the best effects in the game. The extra effect on Spellbook of Judgment is part of the reason it's so powerful. And here's the thing with Plush Fire. Its effect is not once per turn. Pendulum decks love to destroy their own cards, and Pepe decks could do that just as well as any. And Plush Fire could even special summon itself from the field if it was in one of your scales, if one of your Perform Mage monsters was destroyed. But the power of this card came from Pendulum Summoning, as when this card first came out, you could Pendulum Summon as many monsters from your extra deck as you had empty spaces on the field. Which is something they don't allow you to do anymore, even after the Master Rule revisions. Pendulum monsters from the extra deck must go into extra monster zones. So you could set this card as a scale, have it destroyed with one of your many self-destruction effects, which would then activate its effect to special summon a monster from your deck. Then you could Pendulum Summon this monster out in order to destroy it again to special summon another monster from your deck, since its effect is not once per turn. You could destroy multiple copies of this card to special summon multiple cards from your deck. And since Pendulum decks destroy their own cards in order to gain other effects, you're basically gaining advantage off of having to pay a cost for other cards, which were gaining advantage off of those costs. There is another banned card called Double Iris Magician, who simply allows you to search a card from its archetype from your deck to your hand when it's destroyed in the same way as Plush Fire. Both of these cards are good. Plush Fire is just way better, and that's why it got banned so quickly, three months after it was released in the TCG, and was part of another one of the few tier 0 decks in the game's history. The number 1 spot on this list only beats it out by about one week. And at number 1, we have Sixth Sense. Now this card was actually banned in the OCG for a long time, and was just never released in the TCG until many, many years after its first introduction. So when they did release it to the TCG, Rather than release a new card that was already banned, they decided to unban it first to kind of test the waters, saw that it was still broken, and then banned it as soon as the next ban list came around. As what this card does is it allows you to declare two numbers from 1 to 6. Then your opponent rolls a dice, and if the results of one of those two numbers is one of the ones you declared, you get to draw that many cards from your deck. And if the result is something else, you instead send that many cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard. Now, the way you use this card is to basically always call 5 or 6. That way, if your opponent rolls a 5 or 6, you get to draw the near maximum amount of cards for this card's effect. And since the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is balanced around the fact that one card which allows you to draw two cards is considered super good, being able to draw six cards is just straight broken. But it technically is a gamble effect, where if you don't call it correctly, you instead have to send the top one to four cards of your deck to the graveyard. However, this effect is also good. Most decks love to have their monsters in the graveyard. That's why a card like the Grass Looks Greener is banned. All that card does is send cards from your deck to the graveyard. Granted, a whole bunch of cards, but being able to send 1 to 4 is a positive effect as well. Just not as good as its draw effect. So when you use Sixth Sense, you have a 1 in 3 chance of either getting a game-breaking effect that essentially wins you the game on its own, or you get a decent effect. But either way, you come out with a net positive. And since this one card can essentially win you the game on its own with its advantage, without really a downside to it, the card just kind of got banned as soon as they were able to ban it. Because this card was also released when the Dragon Rulers were still around and not banned yet. And they love to put cards in the graveyard too. So you bet every single Dragon Ruler deck was playing this card, even if it was limited to one copy per deck. And you can absolutely guarantee that it won people games on its own for the three months that it was legal to play. Alright, and that's it for the list. I made this list based off of the TCG timelines, so an OCG list might look a little bit differently, and you may have noticed a lack of older cards on the list. Well, besides Sixth Sense. And that's because they were just much slower to ban cards back in the day than they are in the modern format. Because before Chaos Emperor Dragon, they didn't even have a forbidden list. And once they did have one, they were very hesitant to use it. And also, another fun fact, did you know only about 29% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel? <laughs>